and President Trump returning to the U.S. after a visit to France, the president giving a very lengthy handshake to French President Emmanuel Macron, 28 seconds, by the way, calling the U.S.-France alliance stronger than ever. They're still shaking hands this morning. He, he doesn't want to let go. An unusual <laughs> alliance there. The president now back home at uh, his estate in New Jersey, dealing with new questions about his son's meeting with that Russian attorney. We're now learning about a growing list of other people who were also in that room. Meantime, Vice President Mike Pence is meeting with governors around the country, promoting the Senate's revised health care bill, which appears to be hanging by a thread right Right now, ABC's David Wright is in Bedminster, New Jersey, for us this morning. David, good morning. Good morning, Paula and Dan. You know, the president is hoping for a triumphant weekend here in Bedminster, fresh from that trip to France. He arrives back just in time for some of the best golfers in the world to play at his club, the U.S. Open Women's Tournament. But his administration is bogged down in the rough over the Russia investigation. As the president stepped off Air Force One from Paris and returned to his clubhouse in New Jersey, his presence in Bedminster isn't the only thing that threatens to upstage the golf. New questions are mounting over his son Don Jr.'s meeting last year with Russians. My son is a wonderful young man. He took a meeting with a Russian lawyer, not a government lawyer, but a Russian lawyer. But it turns out it wasn't just that one Russian lawyer, Natalia Veselnitskaya, that Don Jr. and other top campaign aides met with. I'm more than happy to be transparent about it, and I'm more than happy to cooperate with everyone. So as far as you know, as far as this incident's concerned, this is all of it. This is everything. Despite that pledge of transparency, we've since learned that the meeting also included this man, Renat Akhmetshin, a Russian-American lobbyist once accused of having been a Soviet counterintelligence officer, but who insisted to the Associated Press he was not trained as a spy. He and a translator sitting down at that meeting with Don Jr., son-in-law Jared Kushner, and campaign chair Paul Manafort, as well as Veselnitskaya. Akhmetshin denies having any ties to Russian intelligence. He and Veselnitskaya both insist they were not doing the Kremlin's bidding. But the growing list of attendees will certainly be of interest to the various investigators looking into any and all interactions between the Trump campaign and Russian interests. Former campaign advisor Michael Caputo testified Friday before the House Intelligence Committee. I had no contact with Russians, and I never heard of anyone in the Trump campaign talking with Russians. I never heard the word Russia, and we did not use Russian dressing. It is the changing story as much as anything that raises some serious red flags. And that's one big reason why lawmakers on Capitol Hill want Don Jr. to come and testify. Dan, Paula. That would be quite a moment. All right, David, thank you for your reporting from New Jersey this morning. We want to check in now with ABC News political guru and consultant Matthew Dowd, who joins us from Austin, Texas. Good morning, Matt. So, um, Good morning. You know, Russia. He's just taking in the word guru. That's, guru. that's the I am taking in the word. And I'm also thinking of all those analogies that were used on the golf thing in the previous thing. That was very Beautiful. Good. <laughs> Beautiful. Let's see He's if you can top rough. that. Yep. We think we believe in you. You can top that, Matt. But uh, so let's go back to Russia. It continues to be a slow drip, and it's infuriating. The president. We saw this week Don Trump Jr. You know, releasing those emails in a move of transparency. But how much different do you think things could be if the administration were able just to get in front of this story? Well, it was transparency at the point of a New York Times gun. You know, they obviously had the stuff, and it was forced to be transparent. I mean, I think this is a series of, to use an analogy, this is like uh, Mission Impossible meets Rocky and Bullwinkle. I mean, it is unbelievable the number of unforced errors that have been in this. And it's almost as if they read a book about the bad ideas and communication strategy. It's every single thing they've done has caused this situation to be worse. And I think it's only going to continue to unravel in the days and weeks ahead. Let's talk about the other major issue facing the president right now. There's this huge push on right now, as you know, to pass the revised health care bill in the Senate. There are already two Republican senators who, sa who have said, no, they're not going to support it. They cannot afford to lose anybody else. So. In sum, what are the odds of this thing actually passing? I think, I think they're low, exceedingly low. I think the meetings they've had with the governors, the only way this could get across the finish line, if a series of governors stood up and said, we need to have this done. But I, I would predict one thing. If one more person goes, then 10 people will go. As soon as they cross the line and, and there's enough senators to say we're not doing this, I think you'll see a whole bunch of other senators follow suit quickly thereafter. Matt Dowd. 
our guru. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next time we expect to see you in robes. Uh, we appreciate it. <laughs> thank, thank you. Take care.